joining us for a little bit, Shreveport City Councilman Oliver Jenkins. Hey, Mr. Oliver, how are you today? I am great. How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Well, let's start off with, and I said this to Aaron going into the break, I said we're going to talk to Councilman Oliver Jenkins, some budget stuff for the city of Shreveport. Oliver is traditionally a fiscal conservative. That means he's probably looking at the budget saying, ho, 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 little Christmas joke there. <laughs> Do we have to spend all this money? Am I pointing, am I at least pointed in the right direction? Well, let me say, certainly when I looked at this budget, I try to do find ways to, you know, ensure that we are getting the most out of the dollars that we have and any dollars that we can't use, um, try to get back to the taxpayers. And so one amendment that I have on there is a debt service amendment that is reducing our debt service millage about uh, two and a half points, returning uh, maybe three and a half to four million dollars to the taxpayers. Essentially, that's dollars that we collect to service government obligation bonds, of which, due to some prudent financial management, we don't have as much debt, and so we don't really need to take in this money anymore. And for those that think all taxes are good, in this case, it is revenue that we cannot spend unless it's on government obligation bonds that taxpayers vote on. And since we haven't vote not, voted on any, they truly cannot be spent. You, so, you also have an amendment with regard to the Metropolitan Planning Commission that's a little bit controversial um, and will save the city. Does it look like $300,000? About two hundred, about 200000 And let's be fair, it is still the cost of the Metropolitan Planning Commission has not changed. It's really an allocation of, albeit city versus parish resources to appropriately fund the MPC. You, this does not, you know, Council Chairman Flurry has proposed getting rid of the MPC and handling that in house. Your amendment has nothing to do with that, correct? It does not have anything to do with that. And, um, you know, we've got, we've got some challenges in terms of, of, I'll just frankly say, uh, leadership or disagreements between various government bodies, the MPC, the MPC commissioners and the executive director. All that being said, I'm not sure the answer to that is to get rid of the MPC. I think maybe, you know, work on some better policies and procedures internally to really make, you know, really the clients that they serve better served. That's very different than a budget item, which isn't going to fix that. That's just a reallocation of resources. You you and I spoke at, on the phone about this. The MPC is funded by the parish and the city. And there was a study done determining who should pay what for the MPC. Describe what that study said, and that's why your amendment is being proposed, correct? Correct. So a third party came in and at the request of the MPC. So neither the city nor the parish co co commanded this study. The MPC itself did. So third party uh, objective, unbiased, and they just did an assessment of how much in terms of the resources that both the city and the parish allocated were going to serve the parish residents and serving the city residents, albeit you know, what's the big overhand? Everybody that lives in the city is also a parish resident. So some of that tax dollars that we spend as members of the city and the parish also are going to the parish coffers, but probably an aside. And when they came back, they said, hey, really the allocation of the MPC's budget should be about 75% city of Shreveport and 25% MPC. They did it two different methods. And so my amendment just lowers us to the 75% Historically, the city's paid about 85% of that MPC budget. That will be the savings of about two hundred grand. About two hundred grand, yes, ma'am. What about the, the proposal from um, Councilman Bradford that would, um, the disparity study, I guess, that he wants to do? Um, how do you feel about that today? I know there's a big vote. Some are saying this could get kind of heated this afternoon. What are you expecting? Well, I mean, I think there's, you know, certainly going to be groups that are supporting and those that do not support. My problem is, and, you know, I have this I struggle with this sometimes, um, you know, here in Shreveport is maybe nationally even, you know, I find to find the policy driver here. I see a lot of politics. 
what is the objective of this study? Nobody has come out and said, hey, this study will do the following. And with that, then we'll be able to implement the following. That that line or that kind of logic has not been disseminated, at least to me. It's not in any of the documents. And certainly, um, as the chief executive of the city, if the mayor's not supporting this, it's a little hard to understand why we would force a chief executive to do a study that they didn't plan to implement. So, you know, I just I'm a little challenged by where is the actual policy substance behind this. Let me ask you another budget question real quick. The mayor's proposing pay raises, police and fire and other city workers. Is that going to pass pretty, pretty easily? Yes. Not a problem. The, the city has the money. I wouldn't think so. I, we put it this way. She has constructed her budget around that and prudently, honestly. And, um, you know, we'd be hard to say that uh, the city employees are overpaid. They're clearly not overpaid. Um, so, um, you know, I think most of us are in support of it. I'd be surprised if there's anybody that objects to it. Uh, Aaron had on the Keel website a couple of weeks ago, keelnews.com, a little longer than that. She had a list of potential mayoral candidates for 2018. And basically she had, let's see, a couple of guys on the Caddo Commission, a couple of other local folks, and virtually every Shreveport City Councilman or one other than James Flurry. Should we take your name off the list? Should we take my name off a list of Aaron's poll? Absolutely not. How about that for an answer? Oh, wow. You you were in fourth place, by the way. <laughs> Does that intrigue I, you at all? Or you, you have one more year left. You're, you're term limited. You, do, um, you, do you ride off into the sunset, or are you interested in the mayor's race at all? I, I enjoy public service, and one reason I got into city council in the first place was after 20 years in the military, it kind of filled a gap, a void, so to speak, that I didn't have anymore. So, you know, I I enjoy it. I, maybe not, you know, as astute on the political side, but I'm pretty much a policy wonk, so I try to, you know, follow those type of uh, opportunities. I don't know if the mayor's the right fit for me. Uh, I'm surprised, though, I did see the poll, or at least somebody sent me a link to it, and you know, what pretends to be a fairly conservative radio show, I was surprised there weren't any Republicans in the top three. So yeah. I, I haven't heard the, the feedback on that. We're getting ready to do a new one. We're going to kind of weed out those who've told me they want to be out and, and others who said they want to be in. So we're going to do a new one. We'll keep your name on there. Fantastic.